In early March 2016, North Korean intelligence personnel were bewildered by a peculiar event taking place on Pohang's coast. More than 9,000 American and 4,500 South Korean Marines were pouring into the beaches as part of a joint exercise called Twin Dragons. Although they were notified in advance, the North Koreans were still astonished by the readiness of their counterparts and, more importantly, the size of the operation, which involved 19 warships. Impressive and detailed footage taken by the Allied forces shows the Marines landing and securing beachheads, armored vehicles advancing straight into towns, and aircraft flying above, providing air support. In truth, the biennial exercise aimed to strengthen joint operations between nations while performing a wide range of activities, from disaster relief to more complex and swift actions against hostile forces, and that included the neighboring communist country. Pacific Nuclear Threats A tense environment between North Korea, South Korea, and the United States has been common going back to the end of the Korean War in 1953. A peace treaty was never signed, with only the armistice agreement covering for it. Since then, military tensions at the 38th parallel have never ceased. In 2009 and 2010, the United States, South Korea, and their allies conducted the joint military drills Full Eagle and Key Resolve as part of a United Nations Security Council sanction against North Korea. The Hermit Kingdom had conducted long-range missile tests during that year, and South Korea and its allies announced they would respond. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un then proclaimed that his nuclear arsenal was ready to destroy his South Korean peers and anybody else in the region. Full Eagle and Key Resolve were part of Operation Plan 5015, aimed at deterring North Korea's use of weapons of mass destruction with a decisive preemptive attack on North Korea's military and weapons facilities. Tensions rose again in early 2016, when leader Kim Jong-un announced once again that his nuclear arsenal was ready to attack any enemy. The U.S. Armed Forces and the Republic of Korea, or ROK, then responded by divulging that they were getting ready for their joint military exercise, Sangyong, or Twin Dragon. Exercise Twin Dragon Exercise Sangyong, or Twin Dragon, is a biennial exercise hosted by the Republic of Korea to strengthen interoperability and working relationships with partner nations, especially the United States. Operation Twin Dragon 2016, scheduled to last from March 8th to 18th, would involve personnel from the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps and the South Korean Navy and Marines, as well as military personnel from Australia and New Zealand. Rear Admiral John Noel, commander of Expeditionary Strike Group 7, said, quote, Sanyang offers the U.S. and ROK the opportunity to test their ability to operate together as an integrated combined naval force. Its significance in assuring interoperability between the U.S. and ROK forces is inestimable. According to information shared by the Marine Corps, over 9,200 U.S. Marines, 3,100 soldiers, 4,500 ROK Marines, 3,000 ROK Navy members, 60 Royal New Zealand soldiers, and 100 Australian military personnel would participate. Captain Ed Thompson, commander of Amphibious Squadron 11, expressed to the Marines media that, quote, the sheer number of personnel involved is extremely impressive. There are a lot of moving parts and things that need to align for a successful exercise. When they do, it is truly amazing to see how we operate together. Official media sources from the U.S. and ROK claim that Sanyong 2016 would focus on conducting amphibious operations for wartime missions and disaster relief efforts. The U.S. Marines also expressed that troops from both countries would conduct flight operations, personnel exchange, and cross-platform exercises to ensure that contingents from either military could appropriately react to threats on the peninsula and the entire Asia-Pacific region. Joint Amphibious Operations 
Twin Dragons 2016 was unique in that it focused on the aggregating of forces for an exercise of Marine Expeditionary Brigade-level forcible entry operations. Petty Officer First Class Matthew Jackson from the 13th Marine Expeditionary Unit wrote that, quote, ESG-7 and the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Brigade will aggregate elements of the Boxer ARG, Von Arm Richard ARG, 13th MEU, 31st MEU, and the Marine Prepositioning Forces with ROK Navy and ROK Marine Corps Marine Task Force to practice full-spectrum amphibious operations. These units were tasked with conducting a simulated amphibious assault along the coasts of Pohang. Once at the beach, the Marines from both countries would penetrate and eliminate hostile beach defenses to establish a beachhead. This operation would rapidly transition into a full-spectrum combined arms forcible entry operation. Captain Keith Moore, commander of Amphibious Squadron 1, expressed that he was confident the exercise would be completed successfully. Quote, I have absolute confidence. I know that we are ready. We've executed all of the missions that are going to be put against us. We've executed them with precision, skill, gusto, and with a warfighting fervor that I know we will take forward when we get tasked. Still, in typical North Korean fashion, Kim went to the media and expressed that the U.S. Marines were getting ready for an invasion. Bruce Klingner, a Korea expert at the Heritage Foundation think tank in Washington, explained that, quote, The North Koreans are particularly wary at seeing Marines on the Korean Peninsula. In September 1950, Marines and soldiers launched an amphibious landing at Incheon that stopped the North Korean advance south and led to UN forces crossing the 38th parallel into North Korea. In other words, the Marines' reputation preceded them, and North Korea knew they were a force to be reckoned with. Klingner added, quote, They know the history of the Marine Corps, so they would see a large presence of Marines on the peninsula as possibly a prelude to an attack or an invasion, especially when it's coupled with the presence of B-52s and nuke-capable submarines. Ready for an invasion. Sangyong-16 began with a combined amphibious assault with 19 ships from the 31st and 13th Marine Expeditionary Units and the ROK Marine Corps Marine Task Force. The U.S. Marines were almost battle-ready when they heard the phrase, Attention Landing Force, stand by for call away. They then grabbed their packs, rifles, and other essential gear and made their way through the cramped decks. Moments later, the Marines were aboard AAV P-7A1 amphibious assault vehicles, helicopters, and hovercraft to attack the beaches of South Korea. Footage from the first day of action captured dozens of amphibious vehicles and aircraft assaulting shores to secure a beachhead. As the men headed to specific zones, more Marines were brought ashore aboard amphibious vehicles and air-cushioned hovercraft. In a matter of minutes, the 19 warships supporting the operation delivered most of the landing force, while at the same time, several aircraft safeguarded the area from above in the skies. Following the initial assaults, the U.S. and ROK Marines began conducting urban warfare training, artillery fire operations, mortar shoots, and other joint exercises. CH-53E Super Stallions packed Marines from the Ghost Company of the 1st Marine Regiment and delivered them quietly over the cold hills of South Korea to practice operations behind enemy lines. Other units, such as the 1st Combat Engineer Battalion, hastily built bunkers, while several Marines practiced action drills for a possible tactical withdrawal from the combat zone. Freedom. Given the enormous scope of Twin Dragons 2016, the logistical support was brought together by Exercise Freedom Banner 16. Marine Colonel Ramin Desmaltri explained that, quote, Freedom Banner set the conditions for the combined amphibious assault that formed the cornerstone of Sung Young 16. Freedom Banner's purpose was to practice using naval and amphibious assets to support forces ashore. The amphibious operations conducted during Sung Young were the next operational step to Freedom Banner's sea-basing operations. The last exercises involved delivering M1A1 Abrams tanks from Marine Delta Company, 1st Tank Battalion, and the 6th Royal Australian Regiment. 
but the highlight of the sea operations involved a fueling at sea between amphibious assault ship USS Bonhomme Richard and guided missile cruiser USS Shiloh, during which USS Bonhomme transferred nearly 10,000 gallons of fuel to the cruiser. Several videos recorded during those days prove the readiness of the U.S. sailors to quickly deliver fuel to another friendly vessel while under stress in a possible combat scenario. Given the tremendous success of the joint exercise between the armed forces of the U.S., South Korea, and their partners, a new event was scheduled for April of 2018 to carry out full Eagle and Key Resolve exercises. The drills were expected to last four weeks, while President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un held their historic meeting. However, despite notifying North Korea about the drills, tensions quickly escalated and the event was postponed to give priority to diplomatic ties between the North and the South. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Doc Documentaries channels to find more exciting content related to the latest joint military exercises conducted around the globe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.